is everybody cozy? Has everybody gotten their blankets? Do you, uh, do you feel calm? Let me know. <laughs> yeah. And we are live on Facebook. Hello, hello, family on Facebook. Hello, Hi, Dad. family. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this last last episode of Warriors of Light. This is a master class series that we've been doing since October. And we are wrapping up today with a very exciting conversation with Tendai, who is so epic. She's going to give us all the juicy, all the exciting things around increasing our personal power, which is like a perfect conversation to wrap this series and to wrap the year. So say hello to us. Let's have a conversation. Say hello in the chat if you're on Zoom, if you're on Facebook. Use the chat box on Facebook to say to yeah to say hello. And later on, we we're going to have an open, sacred conversation together. So you can use the Q and A for any questions, any follow ups, any comments that you have after uh, Tendai shares with us all the magic. And Yes, yes, we're good to go. So the Q&A, if you're on Zoom, is different from the chat, which you can use later. But throughout, the chat is available for you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And thank you, Tendai. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Joy. It is, as your name prescribes, it is a joy to be here. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for offering uh, this beautiful transmission that we're going to have. Uh, I was telling you how it's literally the perfect conversation to end today. So I'm really excited. And before we jump into the whole conversation, uh, let's set sacred space, which is our tradition here on Warriors of Light. We set sacred space so that we can also that we are in this space together. We are in the space together in the quantum, but and let us bring our mind, our body, our spirit to the same space by taking a deep breath wherever we are. and connecting, coming to the heart center, your higher heart center. Allowing yourself to come to that stillness. And to be still, to connect with your core essence within the heart, which is the doorway. The doorway home, connecting with this essence, and you may see this as a diamond. That's what I usually see the diamond light. And you will see this diamond sparkling with blue light of your essence. And allow that essence to move through the body, moving all the way down past all the lower chakras through the root allowing that to move now like a ground cord from the root into the earth like a root of a tree growing within the soil of the earth we are standing on And going down past your earth star that connects you with Mother Earth. And going all the way to the crystalline core of our mother, to the womb of Mother Earth. 
and allowing yourself to go release all the energy that you need of the day through this ground and forth to the core of matter so that this may be transmitted with unconditional love without all our life. And begin to become aware of the diamond white light is different from your blue light. This white light coming in from the mother, we begin to come back up to the ground and to clear out, to wash away, to cleanse even more of your body. Pass the air star in the deep. into your blood and bones. Like a cleansing water and rains. Moving through all of your lower body to the upper body. Out through the top of your head. Into the soul star, a couple of centimeters from your head. And that light now taking all the way to the great central sun, connecting with your higher self, your I am. And we take this time to welcome and invite in the Holy Mother, Holy Mother God. We invite in our luminous ancestral health and spirit, our constant guardians of life, the cancels of our higher selves, to be here, to connect with us, to be the source of this transmission. And we bless the sacred circle with holy Life, holy grace, and the master. Try and take a deep breath in and out as you come back to your body. Take a breath in as you open your eyes. Welcome back. Thank you so much for that joy. <laughs> yes, although I could hear an echo of myself. That's okay. I don't know if it was just me or everyone. Maybe that was part of the echo of your own life. Okay. <laughs> that. <Perhaps. laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> that was the perfect so segue in between has now what yes. we are going to be talking about today, which is increasing your own personal power. Because what are we made out of? When we talk about personal power, does that mean working from falsehoods? Does that mean working from the idea that we have of ourselves? Does that mean working from our identity? Does that mean working for the others that are surrounding us and trying to fulfill the idea of the people that are around us in order to create the identity that means what personal power is? Because what mm -hmm. are you doing at this moment? And this is a question for everybody that is in right now into what are you choosing to give your power to? Are you giving your personal power towards your family members? Are you giving your personal power towards your work? Are you giving your personal power towards yourself? When you are working mm. from yourself, that is the only true place that you are able to be your most authentic self. What does it mean to be authentic? This word gets thrown around so often in 
it's almost become a buzzword into, oh, your authentic self. Oh, I'm working from my authentic self. What does that mean? Working from your authentic self means your true being. It doesn't mean your society. It does not mean your community. It means what are you here to give the world that the world is not gaining at the moment? So who are you? And what have you manifested into your physical being as a human to actually give? You do not need to conform to society. You do not need to conform to your family. You do not need to conform into your community. You can be yourself and be of value because what you have of value is based on your true manifestation of you. So it comes into even what Chadwick Boseman said. I love Chadwick. The fact that we lost our Black Panther hero, who is your king? Is this your king? It was shown all of us in the Black community because when he said, and he said this in an interview, that your very existence is wrapped up in your fulfillment of life and your manifestation in life. Who are you? What are you working towards? Are you actually living in your true power of who you know in your true self when you are in stillness? What are we made up of of human beings? This comes into our koshas. Um, with yogic philosophy, there are mechanics that have been put together to show what has made up a human being. The first one is your anan ananamaya kosha. Your ananamaya kosha is dealing with your physical body. This is what we can see. It's what I see you as. I can see you, Joy. I can see that you have your beautiful red lipstick on. I can see your beautiful <laughs> hair. I can see your locks. I can see that you are in front of me in a human being. How is this fed? This is fed through nutrition. There are people that don't look well. Why are you not looking well? It's based on your diet. It's based on your beliefs. It's based on the information that you are fed. It's based on how are you taking care of your physical being? We all tend to say the superficial parts about, oh, my body isn't feeling right. Oh, my body doesn't feel like the way that it's supposed to. I'm not skinny enough. Oh, I'm a bit too big. Oh, I feel like my skin has a bit of pigmentation. That's still part of you because this is what I am able to see about you. And this is what you are also able to see about me. So what is your Nanamai Kosha is your physical being that is actually transcended into not illusion, but what is in front of a person at that moment. How do you take care of yourself, your, your nutrition? Your, your nutrition, oh, my voice is even going crazy. Your nutrition, your diet. The next part of that comes into your pranamaya kosha. That is the life force that breathes you. So how do you take care of your breath? Prana meaning life force. When you have seen your breath as something that is sacred, that you are breathing in and you're exhaling fully, that's not something to be taken for granted. I remember the day that my grandmother passed away and I had a class that was, I taught a yoga class about two hours later. People asked me, are you sure that you want to take this class? What are you actually going to teach? And I thought to myself, yes, and I'm going to teach about the breath because the breath is a sacred thing that is a part of every single living being around us. When you go to a cemetery, what is the thing that people don't have there? It is their breath. Physical bodies still might be in manifestation, but the thing that ultimately will nourish us is our breath. How are you taking care of how you have your deep inhales and your full exhales? Because that is showing how you are appreciating life. Do you have the quality of breath? Do you have a quality of breath that will sustain you until you are 110 years old? Do you have the quality of breath that when you are anxious, you are still able to have the fullness 
when you are nervous, when you are excited, are you still able to control your breath into those spaces? This even comes into the latter that we talked about, which is your physical body, because your physical body disease comes from that area. When you are filled with disease, all that disease is is dis-ease. When you are constantly worried about the ailments of your physical being, of your human body, how are you able to have the fullness of breath? How are you able to have the fullness and the appreciation for each and moment that you have? Are you able to have your shoulders back? Are you able to have your ears relaxed? Are you able to have your jaw relaxed? How many times a day do you stop just to have 60 deep breaths? In this talk, I don't want to have it as just a talk, but practices and tools that you are able to have that allow you to implement things into your life to have the fulfillment of who you are. Because all too often, we are on autopilot. We're worried, we have fears, we have anxiety. We can't live in the past and we cannot live in the future. The only thing that we can do is in our present moment. And in the present moment, the thing that we can do is breathe. Your quality of life will come from your breath because your breath, you can move from your sympathetic nervous system through to your parasympathetic nervous system, bringing you in the bridge to be able to have your nervous system in a space where you're not able to be in your flight or your fright moment, but into a space of calm. I love this one poem by Naira Wahid, where she said that the same way that an ocean can calm itself, the same way that we can as well. And the way that we can do that is from our breath. So in this moment, even that you are in, we're in the beginning right now. Look at how you're sitting. Look at how you're laying down. Look at how you're standing. Even if you're cooking, take one deep inhale and exhale. Release the tension in your ears. Release the tension in your jaw. Release the tension in your shoulders. See how that shifts the energy of your body just into where you are, into a space of calm so that we can feel at home right here and right now. Your manomaya kosha is the next sheath of the being that comes into what makes us human. Your manamaya kosha comes into your mind, your intellect. How have you been programmed? Your mental aspect. When your mental aspect of, am I not happy, but what's my mentality of myself? What's my mentality of my surroundings? What's my mentality of the situation that I am in? What are your circumstances? Seeing that and seeing it for what it is. Maintaining that thought energy. A human being has up to 70,000 thoughts a day. Did you know that the majority of those thoughts are negative? When you can train your mind into, I'm going to actually have more good thoughts than bad thoughts. I'm actually going to have more positive than negative. And put your thoughts into those processes of saying positive and negative. Train your mind into what you are thinking. And you can do this. Have something that can short circuit your own thought processes. The way to do that is a sankalpa. A sankalpa in yoga is called, is having a certain, is having a phrase 
or sentences that are able to draw you back into yourself. So when you find yourself saying, my life is so bad. Oh, the situation is so terrible. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Guess what that's doing to your higher parts of yourself? Number one, it goes into aiding your disease within your body. It aids your illness, but it also teaches your mind that yes, I actually am this because I am that I am, right? I am that I am. Your biggest enemy is yourself. Your biggest enemy are your fears because you are the person that creates your own fears. It's the hardest thing to learn because we are our own worst enemies. You can think something and then you can believe it, which gets us into our Vijna Maya Kosha, which is your wisdom body. So once your thoughts become your belief system, that's your another layer, your sheath of being. Vijna Maya Kosha is your wisdom body. What do you believe about yourself? Because thoughts become beliefs. What do you believe? Do you believe that you're insignificant? Do you believe that you are great and wonderful? Do you believe that you are magnificent? Do you believe that everything that you have desired is already yours? Do you believe that you are successful? Do you believe that you are the ultimate being in your life? Do you believe that you can have it all? Whatever you believe is what you become. Now look back and trace where the root of your belief system has come from. Because when you have the root of that belief, then you are able to completely annihilate triggers. Because when somebody then calls you weird, when somebody calls you insecure, when somebody calls you an idiot, you're not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it because all of these words that people use will ricochet off you. They will not have the impact that they're supposed to because they do not enter into your own realm of your becoming of the person that you know that is. You will not allow it to enter into your sphere because it has become a bubble. Then that comes into our Nandamaya Kosha. Because once you have worked on your belief system about, oh, this is how I've grown up. I guess this is where I'm stuck. This is the cage. Comes into my joy is. My peace is. My bliss is. Once you've worked through all of those levels into coming into where does my peace come from? Where does my bliss come from? Where does my joy come from? You are then able to connect with who you are into understanding that my joy comes from the idea that I'm an ultimate and eternal being that is able to service others from a cup full. That you are abundant, that you are magnificent, that you are infinite, and that you are vast. No matter what you believe in, you are here and that you are listening to this because it is a reminder to yourself that you are powerful. It's a reminder to yourself that you are the ultimate manifestation of what created you on this planet. At the very center of this is your Atman, or also known as your Atma. This is your eternal self, that when this physical body, when your mental body, when your wisdom body, when your prana body, all sheds away, that you are still you. Who are you above everything? Who are you? above your physical manifestation, above your prana, above your mental, 
above your wisdom and your beliefs. And take a moment right now just to think about that. If everything went away, who are you? Who are you, Joy? If everything went away, who are you? Your physical body, your mental body, Ooh, your thought question. processes, your beliefs. Who are you? The word that came up for me is the eternal flame of love. That vastness that you are speaking of, that infinite, it's an infinite stuff that is always there and for more of everything that's what we will find love itself and i am just a flame of a bigger flame i am part of a bigger fire that's burning but this fire is burning forever we are always in existence we will always exist once I drop all the labels all the identities all the stories when I come using the breath as you were saying I come to the self that's how I see the self that's how I see joy just this eternal flame that's there always will always be there so yeah mm -hmm. And then so everyone, please share with us your, your answer in the chat. Yeah. And share with us that what is it that you become when everything else is stripped away? This physical body, your breath, your beliefs, your thoughts, and even just who, what it is that makes you up as a human. Where do you come from? And I love what you said, Joy, because it's true that what is left is only love. The only thing that's left is fire. The only thing that's left is energy. And energy is formulated by our grounding, our earth, our fire, our air, our water. Mm -hmm everything that's left is that and i love what you just said Tasitole, that i am all the grandmothers and what do Ooh. those grandmothers represent to you because that's wisdom that is wisdom and that's all that you have come from dust to dust but what now is there in between because what then comes in between our dust to dust comes into what yogic philosophy prescribes, which is our eightfold system in yoga, our eight limbs of yoga that they call it. But I'm going to describe this in a way that is very um, different to what other people would do in terms of yoga practice. Yes, in a yoga practice, you will go through all of these systems. In a yoga practice, you will move through these systems. Yoga has become very commercialized, but there's a way in which the very first people that put the Vedas together, they talked about these eight limbs. They talked about how we are able to move within ourselves and our energetic systems. So how are we able on our day-to-day -day lives able to manifest the lives that we want? How are we able to increase the power that we decide to have? Number one is our external disciplines. So our yamas. Your external disciplines are, and these are the ethical standards that we live in. So our ethical standards of who we see ourselves to be, how are you able to function in the world as a human being? Ahimsa, nonviolence. Nonviolence towards the environment, to ourselves, 
to others surrounding us. Sataya, truthfulness. How was your throat chakra? Are you able to tell the truth about who you are? And in order to have that truth without trying to navigate it, without trying to put it down, without trying to eliminate it, without trying to fix it, but standing strong and in the power of that. So who are you and standing true inside that? I keep going back to this question about who are you? Because we started off with formulating how is a human being formed and the energetics and the mechanics of a human being. Asitea, non-stealing. Do you steal people's ideas? Do you steal people's auras? Do you steal people's thoughts about how it is meant to be a person? All of this comes into increasing your power because then you are able to stand back and say, no, this actually is not me, so you can have it. Because each of these things, when it comes into non-stealing, is it's not just stealing a possession. It's not just standing in the integrity of that, but non-stealing is, I know that the things that, and my gifts that I've been given are better. And yours are also better. Brahmacharya, sexual. Oh, this one is interesting because it comes into lust. How are you dealing with your sexual energy. We all have sexual energy. Are you giving yourself freely? Are you interacting sexually with people that are able to equally yoke you? Are you able to transform your sexual energy into something that is energy elsewhere? For example, people would go through spaces of abstinence because they're able to then transform their sexual energy into their work. So how are you transforming your sexual energy? Can you see the ideas inside your own systems and inside your seasons to say, today I'm going to be abstinent, or I'm gonna be abstinent for one year, for two years, to gain the energy in order to be able to work on other areas of your life. Sexual energy is very important because sexual energy is what births. Your sexual energy is what is a creation. You create with that. Your sperm and you've got eggs. Are you able to work with that sexual energy into a place where it is doing well for your personal power? Because your personal power is all based on what you give out. Are you giving your personal and sexual energy to men or to women that don't deserve you? Guess what you're doing? You're giving it away. Your sexual energy is what birthed you. So how dare you feel like you can actually give that away freely? There's this one, I keep thinking about this other poem that I, that I came across is by Alicia Harris, where she said, um, Man's genesis was based in, ah, oh, I even forgot it, but how dare, you, how dare you spit on scripture? So how dare you spit on something that is so sacred inside of you? How, why would you give that to somebody? A parigaha, non-possessiveness. Non-possessiveness also is, is also with non-attachment. So your non-attachment to personal items, material items, to people. If something's not for you, let it go. If something is not for you, let it go. We become so attached to things that we are not able to create room for others. When we don't create room, we are not able to accept the other things that arrive for us. So that comes into our greed. 
How are you able to navigate yourself in a space of greed? We live in a world of capitalism. We live in a world where things have become plastered with people just wanting to take, 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 take. There's no reason that you have to wear 52 pairs of shoes. You're not going to. So how are you able to sustain yourself? Can you sustain and are you able to also give to the community that you are in? Do you leave enough room for others to have quality over quantity at all times? Because your quality will sustain you more than anything else. Your niyamas, your niyamas come into your self-discipline. So before we talked about our integrity and our external and our internal values, but now with this one, it also comes into our self-discipline and still our internal values. So Shaocha, purity, cleanliness of mind in speech and body. This is one of my favorite ones because when it comes into personal power, are you speaking for yourself that comes from your mind? And are you speaking it with clarity? Are you speaking your being about your truth into the world? So often as human beings, we tend to agree with the people next to us. We tend to agree and we tend to conform and that hurts us. Are you able to stand up and say, mm, this is not for me, and this is not adhering to the life goals that I have to, so I will pass on this. You do not have to conform into anything, and saying no is one of those ways that you can. Saying no in a way that aids your personal power, not for your instant gratification, but for your eternal gratification, for your long-term gratification. Because as we know, this time on earth is short. I'm not talking about, okay, for a three month period or a five month period. I am talking about for the long-term that we are here. Are we able to stay true to ourselves by speaking clearly to be able to live a legacy that we desire? Are you able to move in your legacy? Are you able to move in and speak in a way that is clear for other people to understand so that you are able to speak your mind, your santosha, your acceptance of circumstances? It also comes into your contentment. So your contentment with your circumstances. Circumstances will not always be great, but do you accept them? Do you accept where you are at this moment? Because there are people that have much less than you that are accepting, that are happy, but it's not about them, but do you? Do you accept where you are so that you are able to move forward. Your tapas, your perseverance and your persistence. Your persistence comes from a very deep part of you because even as you're moving through your, your um, contentment of your circumstances, you have to accept that what is happening you will still have to have a perseverance through that. That is a muscle that you will always have to use because your muscles, the same as your physical muscles, the thing that we talked about in our koshas, comes into your emotional muscles. How do you flex them? Are you able to work on your own personal emotions, your mind? Are you able to work through your negativity? Are you able to work through the way in which you have been doing things before? We're all stuck in patterns, but your patterns can always be broken through. You have a feedback loop in your brain. 
which is what we call your triggers as well. So your feedback loop can be, oh, that's why that happened. And this is why things are not working out for me. It's not true. It's because you are based in a pattern that is feeding that feedback loop that is then making you think that this is your belief system and that this is your life. Break out of it fast. Set timelines for yourself so that you are able to know that there's something else above that. The next part comes into another one of my favorites, which is Fadi Yaya, which is studying your ancient texts, studying and learning about what other knowledge there is out there. In modern times, that has this has become your neuroscience. It has become learning about your emotions, learning about um, God from other angles, learning about religions, learning about other things that are out there, the theoretical aspects of what else is there. We have the capacity to understand all of these aspects about what it is that somebody else believes in order to gain more control and more understanding about ourselves and God consciousness. Because ultimately, we all believe in the same thing. Above Christianity, above Buddhism, above yogic perspectives, above, um, I don't know, above, <laughs> above all religions, we have the capacity to see beyond. So seeing beyond what else is there in order for you to gain more perspective. The next one is contemplation of your true self. Contemplation of your true self every single day. Get into stillness. Get into listening to your voice back. Take little recordings of what you perceive to be true of your journals. Write words. Putting words onto paper can help you tremendously because you're able then to feed that back into your own self, that you are able to see what you're feeling on certain days and see that, okay, this is this was my true self over there. And then I'm able to get further and further. Again, so that all things can ricochet off you. So when, every, when anybody tells you about yourself, guess what? You won't believe them because you know you. Your personal power is all based on a basic philosophy. And it's the basic yogic philosophy, which is that your mind, your body, and your soul can never be separated. How are you animated? How are you able to come into your own self and your own space? Your next part comes into your asana. Your asana has, in, traditionally speaking, was your posture. But in modern times, it has come into your body. So how do you treat your body as a space of your temple? And how is this practiced? It is through seated positions. It is through getting into a yoga pose every day. We are all in a yoga pose every single day, whether it's seated, whether it's walking, whether it's standing. But in that posture, I want you to feel presence. You can feel presence whether you're standing. That's mountain pose. You can feel presence as you are walking. You can feel presence as you are simply cooking. But getting into a posture every single day that aligns with what you're working on in that space. Iyengar has come, BKS Iyengar is a modern yogi who talked about being able to, who talked about the energetics of a body. So how are you able to get into postures and what do they mean? 
Each yogic posture has got a meaning and works on various energetics of the body. Warrior pose makes you feel like a warrior. Your uh, getting into certain poses of heart openers allow you to open up your heart. S doing the research into what is it that I need and what do I need to open at that moment. Your body knows and you are the teacher. Your pranayama, your breath control. We've talked about this before, but right now I would actually like to just draw things back because I feel like I have been talking a whole lot. <laughs> so entering into a comfortable seated position, wherever you are. And we're just going to connect with our breath right now. Placing your hands comfortably. Your spine up straight. Your eyes closed. And I'd like you to roll your head around. Full range of motion. And taking in one deep inhale and exhale. And really exaggerating it so you can feel the full lung capacity that you have. Rolling the head around, full range of motion. And changing rotation. Staying with the breath. Releasing the tension in your cheeks, releasing the tension in your jaw, releasing the tension in your chin, your eyelids, your forehead, releasing the tension in the crown of your head. Focusing only on my breath and focusing only on my voice. Trusting that my voice shall lead you. Trusting into yourself, knowing that you have a teacher within. Placing the head back into a neutral position. Your eyes still closed. Rolling the shoulders back. Full range of motion. And rolling your shoulders forward, full range of motion, knowing that you do not have to keep and hold the whole world up on your shoulders. Placing the shoulders back into a neutral position. Your eyes still closed. And listening into my voice. 
listening in to these affirmations, as I tell you, and as I remind you that you are abundant, you are magnificent, you are infinite, and you are vast. Everything that you desire is already yours. Breathing in deeply, expanding the chest open. And exhaling fully. We're going to be doing this six more times. As you inhale deeply. And exhale fully. Breathing in love. Exhaling fear. Inhaling faith. Exhaling fear. Inhaling peace. Exhaling joy. Inhaling bliss. And exhaling truth. Inhaling empowerment. And exhaling joy. One more time as we inhale love. And exhaling love. At your core, you are love. You are joy. You are faith. You are peace. You are trust. You are love. You are appreciated. You are supported. Everything that you desire is already yours. Taking in three deep inhales and exhales, feeding in love, joy, and peace into your body.
allowing the breath to enter up into your crown chakra and to the top of your head, allowing it to ribbon down to your eyebrows, to your eyelids, to your ears, your cheeks, your chin, your lips, allowing the breath to make its way down your spine, ribboning down to the base of your spine, down through your thighs, your knees, your calves, your ankles, your heels, the arches of your feet and your toes. Allowing your breath, which is now a golden white light, to move all the way up from your toes, the arches of your feet, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips, your belly button, your chest, as you feel the expansion of your inhales and exhales. Through to your collarbones, your throat, releasing the tension in your throat, your jaw, your ears, your cheeks, your eyelids, your eyebrows, your forehead, the top of your head, allowing this golden white light to expand surrounding your body, creating a bubble as it bounces through your neighboring countries continents of the world, viewing yourself from the outside in, up in the stars. just like the stars, looking down on yourself with so much light. You just have a personal name. You are loved, you are appreciated, you, are supported by all that is. Placing your right hand onto your heart. Be 
Feeling into your heartbeat. You are here to express the highest and best version of your soul. Everything else is secondary. You are abundant. You are magnificent. You are infinite. And you are vast. Everything that you desire is already yours. Time is simultaneous. It is all ready yours. Taking in one deep inhale, expanding the chest open and collapsing it the very same way that universes and galaxies are formed. When you're ready, opening up your eyes, coming back into the center. So what we have just done is our pranayama in practice because pranayama is coming back into the center and working on your parasympathetic nervous system. It is essentially coming back to yourself and what does yourself feel like? Pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses, which also is stimuli. We tend to have our phones around us so much. We tend to have the news on. We have our friends, our community. Everything is stimuli for us, even the lights that we have. Coming back into a space of lack. Dharana, concentration. So after all of these steps is the only time that you're able to now concentrate on what it is that I truly want. And this is where the Sankalpa comes into practice. The phrase of which fulfills your life. The phrase that you move from my phrase and the mission for my life is, I am saying it in the present moment, is I am happy, I am wealthy, I am healthy, I am brave, and I am fulfilled. Saying just those things help us then to cut off the noise in order to fulfill what it is that we truly want in order to concentrate on it. So concentrating on the truth. After that comes into your meditative absorption. Your meditative absorption is now how you live because your meditative absorption is now how you will live your life daily in a day-to-day -day life, working on your sankalpa and what you have concentrated on. Ooh, I actually was feeling all of like the, the emotions of that meditation. So what it is that you're focusing on, what is it that you truly want in life and moving through that. You don't have to flip-flop in between who it is that you're supposed to be and what you truly want. 
your personal power will come from being true in each and every moment, but not being true on falsehoods. Not being true on falsehoods. Those that are listening, you know what your falsehoods are. We've already talked about that. Your belief system, your insecurities, those are false. What is it that you truly believe and are you able to work above that? The last thing that comes and it will come so suddenly to you that one day you will realize that because you've been working so much in your meditative absorption, that you are moving with your life as a prayer, that you're walking your life as a meditation, that all of a sudden you have reached Samadhi and Samadhi is union. Union and integration in bliss. Bliss is a space of no worries. Bliss is a space where it's more than santosha, which is contentment. Your samadhi is a space of complete love in your true self. I talked about personal power in this way because personal power is something that will always come from obviously nothing outside of you, but it comes from stillness, the stillness of peace and the stillness of what truth is. I don't know if you would agree, Joy, but whenever you are in a space of peace, you'll tend to realize that when your actions, when you tend, when you do your actions, that your actions will be pure and that your actions then will have more impact than anything else. You move past fear, you move past conformity, and you move past any of the layers that you have had. It seems like it's so simple, but when you do the work of the inner engineering of yourself, then that's when it becomes hard. Because it's easy to listen about talking about it. It's easy to listen to it, but doing the work is harder because you are, shifting through your life and you're taking out and you're replacing it with your own ideas. Yes. Uh, I have to admit, I'm still in the meditation. I'm still like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm still there, so. <laughs> This is why my face is like, I'm so floating in that beautiful, profound meditation that I don't remember the question you're asking me now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that was so powerful. The meditation itself, it really brought me back to the self, you know? Um, and uh, just that dropping of everything that is false. I experienced that, you know, like the voice of, of the higher realm, the higher guidance just came in. It just dropped, like let go, you know? So thank you for that, for that really powerful experience of Pranayama. Thank uh, you. So yeah. <laughs> and La, uh, in the last two years, I've been working with the grandmothers, which is like a, div a divine collective of grand grandmother wisdom, you know, mother wisdom from my bloodline, from the land, from just all of the human beings. And I tell you, this exact month last year, I was doing a series called Reclaiming Personal Power. So. In this conversation of personal power, 
So as you're speaking now, I'm reminded of, of that, of how the grandmothers, when they gave me that body of work, were talking about at the core of all our issues that we seem to think are outside us and that we need to do outside things to fix them. That's not really what's happening. What's happening is that loss of personal power and that it is through reclaiming that personal power here today we're talking about increasing, which is the same thing. It's through that, that what you see outside will just begin to dissolve and you will step into what you were just talking about into that new timeline where you are in your power and everything is being created in alignment with the truth of who you are your true self the i am love i am wisdom i am courageous you know i am happy that will begin to just manifest because it's a mirror of what's internal what's within you it's also a mirror of your infinite truth, right? And so when we speak, and right now a lot of us, we are speaking about the next year, how we want the next year to be different, because we're doing this like looking uh, at the last 11 months and thinking about how can I create a different reality for myself? How can I be in, alignment with this truth of abundance, of love, of magnificence. And most of us, we would go into the idea of trying to manipulate what's outside or fix what's outside. That's what we think will help. But really it's through those principles that you shared with us that we can truly create a reality that's in alignment with the eternal truth of who you are the eternal truth of your true desires as well, you know, because there's also that, what's your true desire? What is your desire outside the falsehood mm -hmm. that you were just sharing with us? Because so, ultimately you're right in that, you know, whatever it is that's inside of you will always be mirrored outside. And that yeah. is the irony about life is that whatever you're feeling, that will always come out afterwards where if you are feeling angry you're going to be driving to work and you'll find a rageful driver that you feel like then you need to run that you need to drive faster in order to catch up mm. with you will feel as though people are being cruel to you and it's not true that's not the truth it is that you yourself are not in a space of calm and that you are not in a space of success and not wealth, and that you're not able to prescribe that in your outside reality. Yeah. The mechanics of existence, well, at least our current existence is based on that principle that you do create your reality, right? Always. And yes, as we are creating our reality, you are responsible for the creation of it. You are also responsible for discovering every limiting variable within you and within the external that could influence in your creation because you're, you will be creating from the thoughts, from the beliefs that you learned, that you also inherited, you know, that you also consumed in the in the in it's funny because when i said that water came into mind because what we're consuming is also through osmosis you know in the blood as well as what we learn as well as from the collective consciousness which you don't necessarily have to go to someone but you we receive just through being consciousness the rules of this world and you can take them as fact or you could understand that you as a collect as part of the collective consciousness you are also actually creating with this collective consciousness so there is there isn't something like this is it end of story this is just how things are right we are existence in this realm is actually a continuous evolution yes. continuous because, creation and when you realize that you realize that you are a tool 
you yourself are a mm. tool and that you are a magnet so you so your emotions are a magnet into what is going to come and you are able to alter your own emotions if some if you are feeling any sort of way it will always be mirrored outside there keep repeating that but you are a magnet to that that's the mechanics of life and that there's you are a mirror and that everything else will mirror that your internal and your external life will always always coincide you can act there are instances where you are feeling incredibly terrible and something good will happen you've still asked for that because that's the intention that you have set out. Mm, yeah. And for, for those who've been watching this masterclass series, you know, one of the things you said in, in the meditation, there were many things you said that were really profound, but when you were speaking about you are supported, even the way that you said that was different from every other affirmation and that really spoke to me because it's the core of this work that i do to remind that even though you are the creator you are not an individual singularity just creating by itself there is so much support with the grandmothers with the grandfathers there's so much support with all uh, all of consciousness but also mostly with the prime consciousness creator which is what we often call god god is also supporting you such that even in the worst moments even when you feel like you don't have any ability to think anything positive because you are a child of the creator something will be moved because there is that higher aspect of you that can still create when you're your mental self, emotional self is on self-destruct and you can't do anything about that. There's also that infinite essence that will create the good thing, right? That will move you a little bit from that space, you know? So that is also something to remember that you are supported. You're not just a speck alone. This is why I think of it as you are a flame in a bigger flame, or you are, you know, a droplet of water in the ocean, but that droplet of water can never be isolated. And as it moves as a wave, the wave being your life, it will still be connected to all the other droplets of water next to you and all the other waters that have existed before you and those that will later exist. There is nothing like it's me and me alone never yeah and that's exactly why i loved what taz said in the comments because taz said that i am all the grandmothers because even in that question mm -hmm. about who are you you will actually tend to see yourself but you tend to see that you are you have been created now and why that you mm. are a manifestation of all the people that have come before you that have been in existence and that those that we are all just consciousness having to give birth to itself mm. yes uh, khalid yes. gibran said this where it is that our children are not our own our children belong to the universe mm. yes that is the the profound truth to remember and to remember that you know all in all really consciousness right now is exploring its power ultimately the big consciousness its ability to tap into its own resourcefulness its own ability to create galaxies and universes and consciousness is doing that through us you know, we are constantly, all constantly yeah. when you look at physics when you mm. look at astronomy the universe is constantly creating itself what makes us feel as human beings that you're not also constantly being created in that way where it is that we've been actually made up of the same materials that made up the stars, that made up the trees, that made up the ether, that made up space, that made up all of these things that we marvel at. Why not marvel at yourself? 
one then mm. when you marvel at yourself and then not also marvel at another human being into saying that mm. oh joy you're so magnificent gosh oh we are brought together for a reason oh you're you're amazing and then as you're doing that to somebody else you then have that mirror into back to you because you're saying oh what well, i am and it's not coming from an egotistical point of view it's coming from a space of worth because your self worth is what will always is what drives you. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yes. So in understanding that, in understanding that we are here to remember our resourcefulness, our ability to create, um, and we are creating this through our lives. Right, so it, it's so that you were not in this like constant fight of the flow of life, you know, especially when we come to the principle number six of what do I want, the part of manifestation for people. Most of us, we come to it with, with almost as if you disconnect from the understanding that you are the one creating it, that you have the power to create that thing that you call your highest excitement, your highest desire, right? And that it's not about like other people and what they can do to help you create. It's always about the power within you. And as African people, like you've spoken a lot about this in the show, but I want, I don't know if you have wrapped up, but I want you to maybe share on uh, for us African people, our power as a collective, as a Black Lake, has been shifted and it has been inverted and in ways that now for many of us, we feel like we don't have the power to create abundance. Mm -hmm. We don't have the power to experience love. We don't have the power to, you know, to actually step into our dream um, career path or dream work the, like the way we desire to be in service of others it often feels like that's not possible for us as african people and that's because of this power dynamic inversion that has happened in our continent and so sometimes when we hear affirmations like i am abundant it can always automatically the voice comes but like am i is this true? Am I just saying this? Because I've never seen this abundance I speak of, right? So this, how to move through that, you know, I mean, you've spoken about how to move through that, through those principles, but now just bringing it to when you are doing this by yourself and then having to exist in the spaces that we exist in as African people, where these infinite truth are not reflected because of our history right mm -hmm. that can be i have found that to be one of the things uh in my life that are difficult you know in manifestation where i i could believe it and then i start to go speak to to my friends to my cousins to my and then the belief drops i'm just like well, maybe it's not you know how to navigate that well, also I think, opening. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry, I just wanted to share with everyone that you may begin to share with us some questions, some comments, if you feel called uh, in the Q and A. Yes. Um, I love that because Joy, you've spoken about something that you and I have genuinely had conversations about, which is the contrast between when you are living in Africa and on the continent, and then you've come out. And that these questions and these affirmations do not really adhere to where we are. And that comes into history. We need to ask why. And it comes into the principles that I was talking about is into why do we not believe that we actually do have agency in the spaces that we are? It's because of systems. Our systems and our institutions do not tell us as well. That's why personal power is very important. You cannot actually have, I've lived in Zimbabwe, I lived there, I grew up in Zimbabwe. So I understand when it comes into personal power and being told that you are abundant, that you're infinite, 
you go and you talk to your friends and that whole idea becomes an illusion because people are telling you that it can't happen. The way that you move past that is really, again, to believe in yourself and to actually believe in what the truth is and to keep moving through that. Even if you are a lone person, you are a lone person, your voice will be loud. You will find your tribe in every single scenario because Africa has got the youngest population in the world. Africa has got the youngest group of people. Those are the people that have the new understanding, but we also need to understand our history, not only in the terms of where we have come from or in terms of anthropology, but in the terms of the sociology and what it has done to our mindsets. The fact that people sat down to write policies that have to do with breaking of the spirit of African people shows you how strong the African mentality is. African mentality is very strong. African people are very strong. African knowledge and wisdom is one of the strongest above any in the world. And that is what will pull everybody forward. Mm. The fact that it is different and dynamic shows you how much we're able to move beyond, but it's not the same as anybody else's. I think it, is com it comes into being different. We have to allow ourselves to be different in order to achieve. Whether your friends are telling you that this is not achievable, be okay with being different, still be okay with also moving forward. You can have people that disagree with you and you can still move forward. That's personal power and increasing that because you're able to stand on your own two feet with disagreement. The most powerful people in the world have had their head strong and they're also able to move through adversity. Adversity is only a chance for you to grow. Mm, yeah, yes. I speak a lot about this, um, about uh, how I find that where there is the shadow, that's also where the gift is. So in us having a history that has so much uh, atrocity, so much oppression. Oh, yes. Also tells you that there is so much power hidden that or oppressed or, or available. Our healers tell us this. Our healers tell us this yeah. all the time. They tell us about our rituals. They tell us about our strength. They tell us about our traditions. And even they tell us about what it was, what we did to even avoid and to rise above colonialism. The very fact that we still have our own traditions, even when Christianity was imposed on us, means that we still had our oral traditions that allowed us to still transcend and still come above. It's now having the mindset for young people to harness that, to see that we are able to go above. Um, inverted systems are, inverted systems are not bad. <sighs> there's no good and there's no bad. There's no good and there's no bad. I, I know like this one is a, it's a tricky one always. There's no good and there's no bad. It's how you use the tool. How, how are we going to use this tool? Because we're broken people. There's no need for us to be in the situation that we are in because our systems were imposed on us. We have the wealth of the world that's based in Africa. We have the wealth of the world that's based there. I still have a lot of anger in me whenever I talk about situations like this, because I, I know so much about history. I grew up reading Martin Meredith and going into a lot of just the history of Africa, the scramble for Africa and seeing the mechanics about how it happened. The way that I see it is that in order to break that people, as I said earlier, the, the way that people had to do this, the way that white people had to do this was to break a nation. And the only way that you can break a nation is to break a person's spirit. 
So they had to learn that they had to break people's spirits and their minds. And we have to look at where that DNA comes from for us now where we are, because where are our minds in terms of listening to, I am abundant and I am magnificent and I'm infinite, I'm vast. All that is saying is that I am the one that is going to change. I am the one that's going to be the change in this nation. I am going to be the one to stand up against corruption. I'm going to be the one to fix a hospital. I am going to be the one to fix roads. I am going to be the one to become a person of integrity so my people can look up to it. We've lost our voice as Africans. We've lost our power in our throat chakras in order to speak up for what we see and what we view as incompetence. And we need to gain that power back because we are being run by incompetent institutions. It is a very big shame that Africans feel that we feel lesser sometimes, and I don't like that. Hence why I will always say in my classes, and I always say this in all yoga classes that I walk into everywhere that I go, it is that no, you are abundant, you're magnificent, you're infinite, you're vast, because we don't hear it all the time. So the more that we hear it, the more that we speak it, and the more that we speak it into ourselves, then we can change our thought processes about ourselves and our mindsets. That's the only way to gain the belief system that we are. Mm. Yeah. In my path of reclaiming my personal power, I also went into understanding history and particularly understanding the spiritual and quantum mechanics of why history happened the way that it happened why africa was particularly targeted right and I, I, for me that was important and i guess it's in alignment also with my work as a spiritual healer um, to understand why did it happen though on a spiritual level and what I have understood and what I understand now is at the core of uh, the work that I think and I believe we really must do also as Africans to reclaim our personal power as a collective and that is understanding that Africans and you've spoken about this are the original earth keepers yes we we have in our DNA the original angelic DNA that was given to the original ancestors of this planet. And we were meant to create beautiful, basically to enjoy this Eden of the planet. And through all these oppressions, through the, the quest for power, our DNA, I, I hear people talking about how the African spirit was destroyed. And I think, I don't think they could ever destroy it. What they did actually was to hijack the DNA, the blood itself. And the blood, the DNA itself is the one that is attacking now, right? It's because our blood, as we keep uh, moving it from one generation to the other. It's the one energetically holding all these limiting beliefs, the stories that were told to our ancestors about themselves, that it continues to perpetuate and we find ourselves in this loop of creating the same experiences as our ancestors because it's in the blood. Our spirit is infinite and vast. And it can be, they can try to break it, but they've never been able to. Never. But what they have that's done is still exist today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why it's important to understand the imprisonment of the African is not in the spirit, but in the DNA, in the blood, in the mind, in the emotional body, in the bodies themselves. And we must break 
and heal those, right? Through connecting with the spirit self itself, which was never broken, which was always there, like what's happening, right? And it is when we connect with this spirit self, the one that has survived all these atrocities, that we will begin to heal the DNA, the, 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 the eight bodies that have went through the traumas and clear out the DNA so that we don't keep, you know, sending it to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. And this is where everything you've been teaching, everything that Mukulu Zola was teaching, all the Gokos and Mukulus who've been coming here, helping us understand what you can do to cleanse, heal the DNA using food, using yes. yoga, using meditation. These are all tools that we can use to basically regenerate what yes. was actually fully, like that's what we need to understand, what was fully actually hijacked and imprisoned is the DNA itself. You now, can't imprison spiritual. Infant, and you know? even even more so, Joy, what do you attack? You don't attack something that's lesser than you, right? You'll always mm. attack something that is, what? More powerful. And you will come mm. in there with a different weapon. So that's how it was attacked. I also think that the way that it was attacked was the mirror image. Because when you teach people that God was made in our image, and then you're showing a picture of Jesus who does not look like you, you automatically think that I'm not good enough. Yes. Yeah. Very powerful. It, it, yeah. You're very right. I'm completely agreeing with you in the way that Black people and Africans were broken because it is in the DNA. And because it isn't the pain body, the easiest way to manipulate people is when you have hurt them and then you tell them a truth, but a truth that is false. So you tell them a falsehood yeah. and then they're able to, because you're in such a vulnerable position, you're able to agree. Mm, yes. And try and it, hurt happen. somebody and, and, and tell them something about themselves. They will agree with you. Mm, yeah. And that's the thing, like, it's about the falsehood that you were told, that our ancestors were told that we are continuing to believe in, that create our current situations and, and everything else we've spoken about, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in recognizing that in, in, in following the path of being in alignment with the true self, with the spirit, in following the path of, you said it so beautifully in the meditation where you're talking about what is the true, your true purpose of being alive is to fulfill your highest potential. It was yes. something around that. Yes. Right? To yes. fulfill your highest and self. Allow That's yourself. your very existence yes. is just to fulfill that. Yes. Nothing else. Yes. Everything is secondary. You said that, love that. But so in understanding that everything that's happening in your life, it is to ensure you, that is limiting you, is to ensure that you don't fulfill your highest potential. And that to increase your personal power is so that you can fulfill your highest potential. And your highest potential is really what we need all of us to step into if we are to create and manifest our dream lives, you know, or our dream continent, all of that will not be created by us just focusing on the policies we need to make to help Africa be better. We need to appoint new leadership. That's true, but it's like secondary, you know. Hey. Not um, I, I talked point. about this in my TEDx talk where there were a couple of different themes that were going throughout it. So I did a TEDx talk in Harare and the end part was you need to look at where you have come to see also where you're going and to understand where you have fallen 
So where have you fallen and how is that injury still perpetuating your life today? How is that injury still hurting you today? Because the way in which we will then be able to come to policy level or in order to become into our lawmaking eras as Africans is only by individuals. We are led by very broken people. It's only one generation out that these people that are leaders are functioning on. What They don't know any better. You can't tell me mm. that people believe in joy and hope and love and light and all of that nonsense. It's not that. There's a lot of forgiveness that needs to happen and a lot of leeway when then you understand what history has meant and what the realm of sociology has even brought us. There's no expectation for us to have been the golden nation at the moment from what has happened to us because there's a lot of healing that needs to be done. Mm. That will only happen in two generations or in a generation. Mm. I love that you just said that because if we can come into acceptance of that, then we can some like we can move from identifying so much with the current personality and what you believe to be the most important things you must fulfill to the actual mission that your soul and spirit is here to do if you're a person listening to me now if you're a person born at this point is very much connected to the next generation. Maybe and all that that purpose probably people. is, is to heal. And it probably is to birth yeah. the next president, or it is to heal, or it is to birth the next lawmaker, or it is to birth the next person that can involve policies. It is a process of healing because right now we don't, you need to be able to breed that. We need to be able to breed the next people that are coming in. But the people that are in that generation, they're hurting. And I accept that and I understand that. And we all have to. The thing that keeps yeah. getting said is that they fought for our liberation. And they did. And we need to accept that and love that. Because rightfully so. Mm. And accept that we are also doing the same thing. We're continuing the mission of our ancestors, those who fought for our liberation in their own ways, we are still in a liberation path. We're still in the path of having to liberate our minds, our bodies, our spirits from the traumas. And if you move away from, but what about my dreams of this and this and this to the understanding that, but you are infinite. Yes. You will always exist. Yes. So you cannot be attached to this current moment, this current personality, because you will always exist. There is that continuity. This is why we say that we are also our own ancestors. Yes, you know? so exactly. Yes. You are a living ancestor right now. The life you're living is for the next generation to have a better creation timeline, you know? So, yeah, so for me, when people, my students ask, yo, Joy, does this mean that I can't enjoy myself? It's not that you can't enjoy yourself. Actually, Black Joy is at the core of reclamation and liberation path. You must ensure that you are And that joy, joy is wrapped up in how you are fulfilling your life, even in this destiny and even in this space in history, because somebody back is going to be looking back on this history and saying, oh, but Joy was actually the person to actually birth this person. And she believed in this. She was able to cleanse herself and to shift her emotions into a space to have a child that became the next president that yeah. became the greatest and reclaimed the wealth, that reclaimed the gold, that reclaimed all of this. How yeah. are you, what, what is your mission? Because your mission is of joy. Your mission is of greatness. Mm. And that greatness 
actually brings into what is happening in your nation and into society and into your community. You being in London, you being in New Zealand, you being in these different countries, what you're doing is you're gaining understanding into, okay, this is how I think a system should be. And then this is what I'm going to bring back. We're all working and we're all agents towards what is happening in our countries. I don't think anybody that has ever been born on the continent ever leaves that understanding. Mm, yes. Yes. Okay. So jumping into the questions now, um, let's go to. I'm um, sorry. I just wanted to ask is it okay if for 30 seconds I just run over there and come back? Okay. <laughs> just for 30 seconds. So. Thank you. <laughs> and my apologies. No worries. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Yes, okay, My so sister. as she's doing something away, please feel free to comment. How was your experience with the meditation, beloved? Let me know in the comments. Um, and if you have any thoughts, even if it's not a question, please do that. This is the last episode, so I would just love to hear from you, your thoughts, your experience with today's transmission or with any other transmissions that we've had uh, in this series, I will really appreciate just hearing some thoughts from you. Yes, so uh, yeah, this is the last episode. And uh, yeah, I hope you had the best experience with it. And if you have not, you can always also just go watch our replay and consume such wisdom from 16 spiritual wellness experts, wisdom keepers from Africa, all around the world, you know, uh, that, yeah, that will just really shift you. Like, I feel like I myself, because I had to be in, in every conversation, I had to uh, I have been in a master class. I've been in a master's program, essentially. <laughs> so we'll love to hear from you. Yeah. Hi, hi. Okay. Are you done? <laughs> yes. All good. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. So jump into the questions, right? Um, so Nongula is asking, hello, Nongula. How do we transform the sexual energy? to creation, how do we work with it? It can be done by two ways. It can either be done by you withholding your sexual energy and you actually using your own sexual energy into saying, okay, each time that I feel a sense of lust, each time that I feel a sense of urge to go and have sex, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and work. It could be training your own body and your own system into just withholding and you and so that you're able to work on keeping yourself, because ultimately, if you're a man, your sperm is still giving yourself out. And as a woman, it's also giving yourself out as well. It can also be done in the way of if you are giving if in the sense of if you feel like you have always been withholding, then you are able then to go and have sex freely and to be able to enjoy it. So you're releasing all barriers and having it as a sexual experience and a spiritual experience. Mm. Yes, love that. Remember in sexual energy is connected to the DNA. Oh yes, it is. Like, yeah. And sexual, take yeah, take care of your DNA. And sexual energy is based on still creativity sexual energy is creativity because mm -hmm. you're still creating yeah. something within yourself so with masturbation sexuality sexualism sensuality so you would withhold it when you would like to have more personal power when then you are trying to allow yourself more freedom then you are allowing yourself to release mm -hmm. but it is yeah. a discipline yes one of the things I've noticed when we go through a lot of 
trauma and essentially adulting, we tend to lose our creativity or well, the utilization of our creativity where you stop painting, yes. you stop writing the music, you know, you stop um, dancing, you stop moving yourself and really working with your creative gifts, right? So another way is to understand that, that you, that's actually still sexual energy when you are writing, when you're creating, that's the energy you are using from the sacral. So yes. returning to that is you are increasing your personal power, returning to the things that come natural for you, things that are not at all about, you know, like it's a job I have to submit this, but you do it because it gives you joy. You are in your creative state. You enter that state of flow you know, you enter that state where you can connect with your spirit self and through that you're able to create whatever the art is. You know, art can also be cooking, you know, like whatever it is where you are using your hands, using your mind, you know, and you go into a state of you know, stillness as you're creating that thing, you would want to also return to that. Um, that has been so powerful because we, there is a saying that when you go to a shaman, a healer, they will ask you and you say you are not well, you are depressed, you have anxiety or whatever emotional difficulties you're facing. Before even going into deeper healing work, we, we, you will be asked, when was the last time you danced? When was the last time you played Yes. The when is the last time you sang? When is the last time yeah. that you allowed yourself to be creative outside of yourself? And that that's creativity. It's showing it's showing what you're capable of outside of yourself because it's allowing yourself the freedom to to be to play. What's your inner child like? It's to play. Yes, love it. Okay, so uh. This is from Gogo Constance. Thank you for joining us from the US. Hi, Gogo. So she's saying, <laughs> I have spent time looking at what has happened to us as black people, but I'm now thinking what has happened to great women, such as why do women who cannot birth a child or who have children, but they turn out less than in society? The women often feel pressure or feel like she is a failure. So essentially talking about the increasing of personal power for women, especially in relation to, to motherhood or womanhood itself and how that is used to disconnect women from that personal power. Yes. I think that this has to do with feminism as well, because feminism when you look at the history of it, it actually departed women from the aspect of being women. So feminism created this idea that you have to be equal to a man. But in our societies, the woman was, a, woman was already the matriarch, where we nourished our men, where we were able to stand true in ourselves in order to take care of our families. And the men actually had a role that was very different. It comes into when you are trying to be a woman and a man at the same time, your womanhood is so much different. And feminism was the thing that really took over in the Western world. And that is what I think destroyed the womanhood when it came into the when into white women. Because with that connection even to men, then they lost that. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the last, the last. Um, and again, that's how that's how power, power was. That's how power was lost. Because then, when you're not able to be a woman, like we we're taught how to be women, um, in certain cultures, it even comes into Turkish culture, into Arabic culture, um, African culture. We weren't. I think it was lost along the way in Western cultures when it came when it comes into Caucasian women. Sorry, carry on, Joy. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so I was saying the you know the, the thing is the polarities 
that exist in our world is the masculine and feminine energies. Those are the polarity of even the Godhead. And um, so what we currently have is a suppressed feminine energy, right? And a wounded toxic masculinity, right? That creates this patriarchal society. But I think sometimes we can get so lost in, in trying to like, we feel like the way to fix this is to move to the other polarity, either move into the masculinity or, or move into the feminine, the feminine energy. But what we're missing is actually that these two, these energies are meant to coexist First, actually, within each one of us, you have yes. a feminine and you have Yes, feminine. you have a feminine side and, and you have a masculine side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So they are meant to exist within you. And it is through following those principles that you can move energetically, also heal the, the suppressed feminine that was throughout the, the generation and also heal the masculine so that you have that unity first within yourself and then it will be reflected out also within the relationship that you will have as well as we spoke about like how we create our reality mm -hmm. so feminism it was when it was starting it was trying to fix something that at the time really needed feminism which was and the vote and also like Mm -hmm. surrogacy within yeah. women mm -hmm. yeah. but then so joy do you like feel as though do you feel as though feminism was taken too far where it um, was first I, about having a vote in society and then it was about having women to university and having women into school which was correct but then it turned into okay we're going to be better than men because I do think that it actually demasculates men. It emasculates men and doesn't allow I, I, them to be themselves. I think that feminism was created by the wounded patriarch, uh, masculine energy within women because, um, because the, the feminine was suppressed and women had to step into that masculine more that is how we also tried to create this balance. We still use the same energy to fix the very energy we feel like we, we need out or we need a heal, right? So the, that part of feminism that is filled with rage, you know, filled with attack, that's the masculine, that's the wounded masculine energy. It's not the feminine. The feminine itself is compassion. The feminine itself is, is forgiveness. The feminine creates the energy by being within its own organic creation energy. And feminism has, and I don't, I understand it's, it's the same thing with Africa. Like even us trying to fix Africa from the same wound is what has led us to being in the exact space we've been in for many many years it's because we're healing you it's not healing with the healed self it's healing yeah. with the wounded self you yes. only see from the pain and from the wound and you say okay so they did this to us so we need to do this to fix this mm -hmm. and that's not the organic way that uh creation is so it, it's off because of that so i always feel like we actually neglected in feminism the feminine itself that we wanted to to bring back you know uh which is an energy rather than like going to school is actually a masculine thing you know so we're fighting for them and that's okay because mm -hmm. those were suppressed but actually yes. we need to look into what about the suppression of 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 compassion that yes. happens? You know, and how now we're afraid to say that. What about the suppression of love that is happening in our world? And how we even women we do hold that that we suppress love, we suppress giving it, we suppress receiving it. 
what if we were to be because the feminine is about the unseen it's about yes. what we can see yes. and that's what was suppressed we confession was suppressed love was suppressed you are told that's not the most important the most important for you to have an education and it's because that yeah that's you're true. right because masculine is about order masculine is about order yes. and it's about structure feminine feminine is about compassion and it's also about chaos Fem, fe, feminism is about the feminine side is chaos and it's sensuality but how is it that we were not able to balance out these two sides what happened for the world in order to not balance out those two sides was it the industrial revolution that then made men go back to work, which felt like they were not able then to express their feminine side and that women were felt like they were actually then left at home and not able to function and to like do in order to have the balance. And then how is that balance able to be felt today? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's a lot of systems, you know, it, it is related to our history and um, you know, this this root race age that we're in um, of the mental, you know, which is the age we've been in for thousands of years, you know, is also at the core of all of our issues that we became too mental oriented. So even the, the revolutions that have happened before why they have never thought very organic and like you know something is organic if all of us say yes that makes sense let's create that you know but if there is a part that feels like no there's something off here then it means something is off because we are one and if we are in a true organic if we're, we're, we're creating something that is organic it will definitely resonate with everyone because it will be based on what is universal which is a divine logo. But now when it starts, if we have that back and forth, something is off. And I do believe that this age that we are just leaving of the mental, because now we are returning to the spiritual. So I often also feel, and I think I spoke a lot about this, that it's, it's almost like a season that we were in, almost like there wasn't anything that we could have really done to stop it. Yeah. because it was the season for the earth in her cycle to yes. move into the yes. mental to create with the mental and in the creating with the mental there were obviously some things where we went a little too much and we disconnected and so yeah the the revolutions we are finding it's why we are grateful for technology because it has allowed us to do this but we also see where else it's also disconnecting us with our organic personal power of connection physical connection we, yes. we see that right mm -hmm. so i think that it's a lot of systems and uh on uh on what uh what Coco constance is saying because she she has continued the question mm -hmm. um I, she's talking about how also there seems to be a lot of pressure on women because women give birth to children. It's almost as if, if the, those children continue to create, to be bad, for lack of a better word, the woman is the one who is put as the responsible. Right? No. So would you say others, for example, are responsible for what we're seeing in the world because they create, like they gave birth Without you to every human being. No, I, I actually think that that it was a symptom of something that happened. Whereas that men lost the responsibility, men lost the 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 footing to stand on in order to be responsible for what is to happen. When you read what Jordan Peterson talks about in Twelve Rules of Life, it is talking about how are you able to be responsible as a man for the things that truly matter. It's bringing back the manhood and putting back the archetypal figures that are supposed to be within a man because that was lost. Mm. So there mm. is that polarity okay. between uh, how is it that women are, were becoming too strong, not too strong because women are strong, but how is it that women were 
not allowing themselves to be true women or not allowing men to actually be themselves. Because once we do that, allowing men to lose their power, men have to be responsible. But in what way are we saying that they shouldn't be? In what way are we losing the balance for that to not have people accountable for what they're supposed to supposed to do? Um, I don't know. In that first um, question that Gogo wrote, was it also about, um, did she mention white women over there as well? Was there something about no, white no. women? Uh, oh, okay. Because uh, okay. uh, there's something about white women. And I wanted to point out that I've seen, I live in a white society now, and me, I've seen white women be very strong and also do their things. So I don't think that it's a race thing. I do think that it's a womanhood ideology into how are us as women able to get back to our own roots of not overwhelming ourselves and into still truly having our nutrition for our minds, our bodies and our spirits so that we are still able to live long lives. We don't have to take on responsibilities of others. Our responsibilities are to be compassionate, to give birth and to raise beautiful children and still have the nourishment and the joy of life and the love of life. We don't have to have anything else. We don't have to be burnt out by life. Yes, I love that. So essentially it's, it's connecting back with what you are saying. Like it's about the falsehood that you know, we received because of the history, because of these systems that were put in place to continue to enslave us mentally, physically, spiritually, right? So it's in, once you recognize that this is a false food, so for example, the idea that you are not a woman enough unless you have children, that, that's, that's nonsense. Just a story. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a story. Just a story. And, and to reclaim your personal power is to exactly say what the guy is saying. That's nonsense. If anyone <laughs> comes to you and says that, because it's not true, because your value is not based on your ability to give birth to children. Your, your, your mission, every one of us, we have our missions and it's different. Some people's mission is to be mothers, to yes. give birth to that future yes. president, president, to give birth to that person. Yes. who's going to be, you know, the one who gives people flowers. Like, it doesn't yes. even have to be, like, your mission is, like, moving away from the idea of what your highest potential is. Because yes. most of us, when we hear this, I've had people say, because I like to ask people, what is your mission? What is your purpose? Me too. What I are you that. here to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the same time, a lot of people get really triggered by that question because of this idea that it's supposed to be this big, grand thing. Like, oh, my mission is to become a president or my mission is to become Oprah Winfrey. Like, we always focus on your highest potential being about the outside and the titles. But there is someone whose highest potential to give birth to children that is the highest potential in this yes it yes. is to be a mother yes and others who it's to teach yes. just to teach students yes. and you know so it's not been locked in by people's idea or people don't matter to be, what, what matters what is you matter. people yeah. other people don't matter that's noise that's noise mm. what matters at the core of it is who you are and what you are here to do in your own mission. The only way to figure that out is to be still, release everything and to ask yourself, sit in a dark room with yourself, with your thoughts, your feelings, emotions, cleanse it out, cry it out, laugh about it and say, okay, what am I here to do? Start from scratch. Mm. The rest is noise. And the answer, doesn't have to be a big grand thing. <laughs> yeah. The answer could be you're here to go give the dogs food. Go give the the dogs food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, and so that's one the last irony question. Of it. Hey Joy, that's the irony because you know you can you can think that it that is not a big thing. 
but ultimately that that small thing that you think is big you can think that oh mm. my, my mission over here in, in this life is only to become a mother that can actually be such a grand thing you can give birth to the next president you can give birth to the next prime minister then you're thinking okay my mission over here is only to teach guess what you're doing you're teaching somebody how to actually gain the, their own personal power into becoming the greatest version of themselves in order to become that great thing that our life needs. We have to look at the mm. bigger picture. We have to look at what piece of the puzzle you are playing inside what this world is giving us right now. Mm. Yes. Yes, every, every single one of us who matter, our role, so powerful right like when i think about like even if you were to think about people who we think have big roles you know so let's take for example jesus christ as an archetype that we understand we may believe that oh he was the most important and that is not true <laughs> he was not he important was at that time <laughs> he was yeah. upset in the church so, going to go drop things or oh, he he was angry he yeah. probably also he was upset with things yes so with jesus also jesus is jesus we know because of his mother mary and joseph because of the 12 disciples that were with him in this journey because of his teachers who are not mentioned in the bible but they were probably teachers he encountered who helped him and he did remember his mission you know, because of Mary Magdalene and the role that she played in his life. So every one of us, you're playing a role. And even if for you, it might be that you are the mother to the child who's going to make, to do the mission that is big and known by the world. It doesn't mean that your mission itself wasn't important. It was probably vital that you were the mother because if yes. not you, that child will not have your DNA, that child will not have the mental capacity, all the gifts that allows them to do that, yes. right? So it's, it's, we must value ourselves and we must value the positions we're in and know that every, every part of you is important. And even if you can't see it, you existing clearly means that you were meant to exist at this particular point in time. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, to Mary Magdalene. Yes, <laughs> we know how the feminine is removed from the narrative of the Christ mission, but she played a huge role. Yeah, right. but also we have to realize that the apocrypha of Mary is out there. So you are still able to read the apocrypha of Mary. You still are able to read um, the, some of her works and what her role was. So it, even though it wasn't put into the Bible, with what the Bible is still a compilation of books that were put during that time, but we have to understand that a man was also put, a man also put compiled those books and it hasn't changed mm -hmm. over history. So do your own research. That's why the Yaya in, re, in studying ancient texts, do your history, understand different texts and study so that you're able to see what matters. I saw a question over here. Oh, it says, thank you, yeah. Diana. Thank you so much for this joy and Tindai. Are there any books you could recommend that touch on what you discussed today? The meditation was wonderful. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, um, Diana. Thank you, Diana. The books that I would recommend are, uh, da, 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 da. it's at the tip of my tongue over here. I'm gonna start with the others. 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was just thinking that, that book. <laughs> yeah. um, there is one that is so important over here but it is slipping my mind and I can't believe this it has with Arjuna if somebody could remind me that would be awesome it's a yogic book um, with Arjuna as the main character how am I forgetting this I use it all the time anyway um, also Anamkara <laughs> by Don um by john o'donohue anamkara like and yeah. um hmm a couple of outliers malcolm gladwell malcolm gladwell and da, 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 
the histories of Africa coming into Martin Meredith because he has put together each country and how everything was formed, how everything came to be. Um, and just going to go and listen to music. Music teaches you everything because it comes from an individual and music can help you understand the times. Mm. Yes, yes. Oh, so good. Love it. it. Are there any books that you would recommend, Joy? Oh my God, like my mind just freezes whenever I'm asked that question. Um, but let me, let me see. Uh, you know, this one is a little like for those people who love understanding the mechanics of existence, I am one of those people. Yeah. So it's quite scientific a little bit, but it's called The Nature of Personal Reality. And this is by Jane Roberts, right? Uh, from the Oh, Jane Roberts. She was a she was yeah. the medium, right? She was the medium. Yes. So she channeled in sex and yes. that book, if, if <laughs> ever I am stuck in, <laughs> if I ever am stuck in an infinite loop and I can only have one book to read forever, that will be the book. Yes. I've actually recommended so many times and I want to just put a disclaimer to people. It is a little bit like thick. I read it in one year. It's that like, uh, what it's amazing. Think, it's dense information yeah you will read one page and you will need to go process it for like a couple of days yes before you go to the next but if, if you wanted to ever understand what reality is it's That's actually talking about personal yeah. reality yes. how you create your personal reality if you could get that book for 2021 and decide you will push through and read that book it will change your life Amen. Yes, That's such a good book. Yeah. Such a good book. Yeah. Jane Roberts as well. Her story herself is incredible because this is a woman who was just driving along the road with her husband and next minute started to feel something and hear a voice. And she was like, what is happening to me? So Jane Roberts, yes. And also the, yeah. Bhagavad, the book that I was thinking about was the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, as well as Conversations with God. Mm. Yes. And uh oh, I know the other one which one speaks particularly on personal power. Caroline Knight. Is oh my god, yes. Power. Yes. <laughs> I love yes. her. I love her. And with, with Carolyn Mace as well, the anatomy of the spirit. Because she has yes, another book also the anatomy of the spirit. Amazing. Incredible. That, that one as well. That was very, very good. And for the healers. For those who are healers who have practices, you must read, oh, how can I believe I forgot her, her name? But it's called Soul Retrieval. It's about reclaiming the soul. Uh, Sandra, her name is Sandra. It is the, what is her same name? Seeing the, okay. even the book cover in my head. I've read this book before as well. <laughs> Soul I'm seeing Not the yet. cover. I'm so, seeing so, the book in my head. <laughs> I always actually forget her name. She is a she's a shaman who writes a lot about personal power. Let me, um, let me see her full name. Okay, Engaman, Sandra Engaman. So yeah, so many books to read from. So but many. essentially, mm -hmm. yeah, study the books, read the books. Um, in fact, the, when when a book is a little difficult, that's the one you really want to go and go through, continue to read it. For me, I think um, sometimes when we hear all these concepts, they feel very far off. And I noticed that the reason why sometimes something does not solidify as a truth for you is because there is some loopholes existing in the concept you don't understand the core basis of how that's true, right? So this is why I love understanding the mechanics of existence. Yes. Like I would love to understand instead of just go and meditate, I want to know why, why must I meditate? Once you get why you meditate, you will not struggle to meditate because you get the full picture. 
right? So also do that for your mind because I think we're very mental as a, as a good race. Um, and so support yourself and also looking into the why of things. Yes. Why do you think? Why do you know that? Like that will really help you to get why you should do it. Yes. And that, that's exactly why I started off with the koshas. Because what makes you a human being? What makes your existence? It is literally your physical body, your mind, your breath, your wisdom body. And your bliss inside of that is your eternal soul. So I, really mm. the mechanics of what it is that makes you a person. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can become that inner architect of your life. Yes. Because you understand how to build the house of your life. Yes. You know? yes. yes. And also you, okay. you do then also realize that, hey, like even the words that I speak, you start to take care of things that you realize the words that I speak become the house that I live in. And you're like, oh, mm. I'm not going to speak anything like this. B, I'm so happy for this. Everyone that listened in, thank <laughs> you for keep, keeping you. on all this time and also for, <laughs> for listening and for taking your notes and for just being and realize that this is not a coincidence that we were all sitting here today and for also realizing that you are the true archetype architect of your life and also realizing that you are greater you are great beyond measure and that when you have the vulnerability to speak that out gain your tribe don't have people around you that base that are feeding into a negative aspect of yourself that's a sangha have a sangha in your life where you can have heightened conversations with because that will also mm. feed into yourself. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So one last tool when you were talking about the, th the, the words that you speak, becoming aware of, of those words and how they help you create your reality. A tool and it's also just want to take the time to explain why you know how in Christianity they use the word rebuke. I rebuke this. This is powerful. It's a way to cross out, remove out a thought, a, a contract you just made. So you could say delete, instantly delete, instantly yes. remove. I use delete, delete. I always see myself almost as if I'm deleting it in the eternal context. Yes. Delete that thought that I'm not good enough. Right, so using words like delete, remove, reject, rebuke, whatever word feels comfortable for you. That's how much we have power. We are multidimensional beings and we are constantly creating and you can always basically delete the way you delete the wrong word in the computer, right? So understand your power and that your power is within your words, is in using the words, the commands, the oath that you will step into that creation. So if there's one thing you want to begin doing 2021 is to utilize the throat and use your words out loud to <laughs> the creation field, like creation field, please delete that thought. I am no longer affiliated to it. Yes. Right? So hope that really helps in, in your manifestation of your highest potential. Oh, this was so good. Oh, we have been, this is the longest conversation ever, but it was so good. So thank good. you, thank you so much. Thank Tadai you, Joy, and congratulations, you. Joy. Before we, congratulations, Joy, on your whole series, Warriors of Light. I'm so proud of you, my friend. I'm so incredibly proud thank of you for you archiving so your work. You are a beast. You are amazing. And maybe... You will always may you continue to use your personal power. Uh, thank you so much. Ah, thank you so much for that. Uh, I will remember that this is about utilizing my personal power and stepping into my highest potential. This is definitely my highest potential. Archiving, be in conversation with you, with all the the healers, wellness experts that have come to the series, 17 of you guys, 
Kokotas is here. She came in episode five. Thank you so much. And she's been a consistent uh, audience, beloved, who comes to every episode, as well as, uh, you know, Coco Constance, I see you, Elisabetta, Nongfudi, so Diana, thank you, thank you, and everyone who's been coming, and Nongfula, who's joining us on Facebook. Um, she, yeah, she really shared that this today really resonated with her uh, very okay. deeply. And she's really reminded that duality is an illusion, that she can move beyond the light and dark and exist in a state of absolute bliss. So thank you so much for that reminder, Tendai. And uh, everyone as well, thank you so much for staying two hours. We truly appreciate you. It makes the party a little bit more exciting when they are before, right? So yes. This I love you the all. End of what Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So season one of this masterclass series, we may or may we will come back. Helen, say my personal power in my personal power. The time when I see is that this series will come back next year, and we will continue to archive the voices of Africans. The voices of Africa we will continue the work of increasing our personal power through these conversations through this archive through creating sacred spaces where we can commune with each other and remember with together who we really are our true potential as infinite magnificent vast beings as Tendai say abundant beings and that this work, we are not alone. We are here with each other and we will arrive to that reality of feeling, experiencing the abundant self, the magnificent self, the infinite self and the vast self. And if it's not us, it will be our children and that is great enough, that's our for us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, my love. Okay. Mwah. I should. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. <laughs>